Thanks for rolling podcast. We are here to recap our big weekend at ADCC. How's it going? It's going great, man. Just got back from the big trip. That's right. Back from Vegas. Uh, we're sh- recording this on a Thursday. Um, got back on Monday. Oh, I got back late on Monday. You got back a little earlier yep. on Monday. So we thought we would take some time to recap the event like we've yeah. done before. I mean, this trip was almost a year in the making, right? We all booked tickets in November last year. It was right around, I yeah. think it was the day after Thanksgiving, Black yeah. Friday. They went up for sale and they're yep. gone in minutes. Yep. Yep. It's a long time coming. Long, not just for us, right, but long build up for everybody who was uh, right because there. ADCC was supposed to be last year, and everything got bumped because of the the pandemic. Because trials were supposed to be in twenty twenty, they couldn't do the trials for pandemic reasons. So mm-hmm. I think it was at that point they decided, okay, we're just going to push this whole thing out. Um, and I think it was kind of for the better. I think it just gave them that extra time to really put together a killer show. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely showed in the, in the production. Yeah, I don't know if you saw. There's been some pictures floating around the comparison of like an old ADCC versus. I think it was the first one versus the most recent one, and it's just it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, we saw Mo earlier. Well, no, we didn't see him, but he was talking earlier um, about how it was like you know being taking place at somebody's gym. Yeah, right? I, I think like a actually, gymnasium. I sent you that 2013 super fight video yesterday, and yeah. it was Galvao versus. Braulio Estima, right? Estima, yeah. Yep. And there's literally seven people there watching. Yeah. It looked like it was in somebody's high school gymnasium. Yeah. Right? Like I wooden, mean, that one, that one was in China, so they had <clears throat> attendance and viewer issues Yeah, to begin with. But, yeah. I mean, still, that was kind of indicative of the climate of of spectators for jiu-jitsu at the time. Right. Then you and I were talking today about how many people we thought were actually there. They kept saying it was sold out. Um between ten and twelve thousand people. Yeah, probably. I mean, numbers have been thrown all over the place, but definitely a solid ten thousand. Like, there's no no argument. Ten thousand minimum. Yeah, yeah. They're saying maybe twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So, if you don't know, it took place at <coughs> on UNLV's campus at the Thomas and Mack Center, uh, which is their uh, arena, basketball arena. Um, and it was obviously not the floor wasn't filled because of the mat space, but it was equivalent to like a hockey. I guess it would be a hockey. Yeah, it was arena. a great yeah. venue. It's very, I mean, since it's a basketball arena, it's the floor space is small, so the seating's just right on top of it. Right, right. So they had three mats going. Uh, one end of the arena was the big stage, full production, right? Like, what they have five, seven, ten sc- video screens, pyro, music, Every smoke. Single light feature yeah. that could be purchased. Yeah. It was, was on that rig. It was ridiculous. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Uh, DJ, a live DJ who was, who was cutting tunes. Dude, that guy needs an award. Yeah. He played for, let's see, so we were there all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and that guy did not stop playing music. Yeah, Saturday. Except for the finals, right? Saturday was like 10 hours. Yeah. Sunday was 14 hours. Yeah. Music the entire time. Yeah. It was, it was great. I couldn't believe how much music I I mean, I'm play. sure he had to sneak away for a bathroom break, but every time I looked over there, he was actually... Yeah. Yeah, at his station. Yeah, he wasn't just playing recordings. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, so a bunch of us went, right? So uh, we had, I guess, six of us from this gym. We saw a whole host of people that we know across the country, which is pretty cool. Pretty big event. Um, all of the, a lot of celebrities were there. So definitely anybody who has any interest in jujitsu was there. Yeah, it right? was the who's who of of jujitsu personalities yeah. were there. And then, you know, some UFC talent. So it was cool. Yeah, it was definitely it was, cool. It drew a lot of attention. <clears throat> I mean, any time in the past, you're not getting people to go sit in seats and watch grappling matches for that long. Yeah. And they were long days, right? So the f- Saturday uh, was the first two rounds of the men's brackets, the first round of the women's bracket. Uh, all the introductions started about an hour and a half yeah. late, right? Uh, I was supposed to start at 10, maybe start at 1130. Yeah, at least. They, so. were, they were running late. <laughs> then the introductions took forever. <sighs> then they had to give the competitors time to warm up. So yeah, uh, I guess without those delays, though, that 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 day would have run really smooth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they once they get started, it's just 
the train's rolling. There's no yeah. stopping. It's just yeah. As soon as a match is done, they're calling right. up next on yep. mat three. Yep. They just blow right through it. So, I mean, it made it hard to go catch a bathroom break or yeah. You don't know where, when, to eat. when to go. I know. Like what, what, what point? Uh, and then the second day. Started later, so started at 11. It started exactly on time. Dude, on the dot. On the dot. Yeah. 11 zero, zero. Yep, yep. I looked at my, I purposely had my phone, and I looked. I was like, holy shit, it's actually 11 on yeah. the spot. They definitely took that criticism and yeah. corrected it. Yeah. But that was a long day. I yeah, because we got in there at, what, 9? 9.30, maybe? 9.30. Yeah. So we waited for an hour and a half. And we walked out at almost 11 p.m. Was it that late? Yeah. No, it can't be that. I've been that late. Really? Mm-hmm. Good grief. Yeah. So that was a long yeah, day. Yeah, because everyone here is complaining that they were up until like 2 a.m. watching. That was a long day. So that day had the final two rounds of the men's brackets. Yeah, so they ran They ran all the semifinals, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Then they ran... Did they run the third place matches? Or did, is that when they stopped to do the Hall of Fame thing? I don't remember the order now. I forget what the order was but either way they it was all the semifinals third place matches yep first place matches hall, hall of, fame. of fame ceremony the entire absolute bracket yep and then the super fight yep it was a lot of jujitsu that was a lot of jujitsu <laughs> it was a lot of jujitsu and it was funny because once <laughs> they got rolling with the super or the absolutes because they were going three matches three mats at a time you realized like oh wow there's so much to watch right because mm-hmm. even like the third place matches it's one on one. It's in the middle. Everybody's attention is in one spot, and then once they started going with the absolutes, it was like, oh, there's all this action happening. Right, and every time. absolute match is an interesting matchup. They try to purposely set up yeah. big guy, yeah. small guy, guys that have never met before. Yeah, um, yeah, that was pretty interesting to see. Like, I don't I haven't really seen a lot of that before, like just personally. So it was kind of cool to watch yeah. all the kind of strange matchups that were happening, especially the big and small guys. Yeah, yeah for me, I mean, just initial impressions of the event. I'd, other than the you know, some small criticisms here or there on the timing and the pacing and whatnot, but I mean, it couldn't have been better. I was blown away. Yeah, I was I was very impressed. And it seems like everybody was pretty excited. Yeah. I've watched, yeah, obviously we've all watched a lot of jujitsu live on TV, streaming, whatever. It's, I mean, it was amazing. Yeah. Who do you think got the biggest pop uh, from the fans? Not like, I don't mean like a submission, but like when they were doing the introductions, who do you think got the biggest reaction? Oh man, that's, that's a tough call. You know, Craig Jones is a crowd favorite. Yep. Every every time he came out, there was yep. a pretty good pop. Yep. I mean, the women got tons of love. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Fionn Davies, huge crowd favorite. Huge. Uh, I mean, even just, what was it, when they did the the introductions when she came out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kendall Rusin got a big got a big response. Yeah. Gordon obviously Gordon did. Got, yeah. <clears throat> Gordon. Yeah. He's got the biggest fan base. Yeah. But I was surprised, like... Um, about the women's matches. In fact, um, my parents were over yesterday, and I was texting Pat. I had the 77K final on for my father to watch. And um, he, after that, he was like, well, what about the women? So he just wanted to watch the women go. And I was like, these are some great matches. Yeah. These are some great matches. Um, so one of the things we had uh, decided to do was put together our top five lists. Um, yeah, I mean, we had... Long flight coming back, yeah. so I got bored with watching Ted Lasso, or ran out of episodes of Ted Lasso to watch, so I'm like, you know what, I should, I want to make some notes, because we knew we were going to podcast about this, so yeah. I'm like, I don't want to just get on the podcast and yeah, can't remember, because I didn't know, were we going to do it this week, next week, so yep. Yep. I started jotting some notes, and then, said, yeah, how about we do a a top five moments? Yep, yep. So do you want to break break them down? Yeah. How do, do you, you have do a, it? do you have runners up or anything, or do you just have a five? A five? So I have, I mean, some of them are, some of them are top five moments. Others are like top five competitors, like just their, their performance in general. Mm -hmm. And then I have a couple of bullet points on just, I think, good talking points to take away from the event. Yep. Okay. So I'll, I'll start with at least my runner up. Um, Because I have, I mean, like my list is pretty much five. And I had a hard time. Putting these in order. Yep. I mean, any of these, they, any of them could have gone one through five. So I wouldn't yeah. put a lot of weight on. Yep. On actually, number one is solid. Two through five could have been any of them. Yeah. So my runner up was Isaac Michelle and <clears throat> uh, Wagner Roach's match in the first yeah. round. 
Because, like, Isaac had a lot of heat coming in, right? Even when we talked to Joe Dirk Ising on the pod, uh, he had mentioned Isaac. We saw Isaac win. Um, who's next? Who's next? Uh, a couple months ago. Uh, he seemed to be a hot name. He just came off the Oceana trials as the winner. Goes up against Wagner. Veteran. Yeah, tough match. Tough, tough match. first match. Um, but he went after it. Yep. I was like, oh, shit, this is good. And then went to a uh, ref's uh, decision, and he lost. Um, I think everybody was pretty shocked. Yeah, I mean, Isaac, he was chasing Wagner's back for a good portion of that match. I mean, that's his thing. But it just as impressive as seeing how much of a veteran in that rule set that Wagner is. He just has has the awareness to not give up those points for the back. Yeah, I mean, that's what we've been working on in class all this week. That was one of my biggest takeaways from the event. But Wagner is just so good at not allowing that second hook to come in and get the points. Right, what you need in this. And then it goes to overtime. He turns it up. He's physical. Yep. Takes the decision. Yep. It was crazy. I was like, damn. I, I was actually very surprised when I saw that happen. Cause it just seemed like uh, Isaac being the aggressor the whole time and, you know, just really getting after it. But to your point, you couldn't close it. Yep. So, yeah. So that was my, that was my runner up. Okay. Uh, what do you have for your number five? So number five. I'm sure we, and just, you know, Pat and I have not shared these with each yeah, other. Not. So there could be some overlap. So number five, I have just the, the overall performance of Fionn Davies. I think it was a huge breakout performance for her. She's had, I mean, the last ADCC, she had the big upset over Bia Mesquita, who had beaten her at the previous ADCC. So they were like one-on-one or one-to-one for arm bars on each other. And I think being able to go out there and, you know, of course, the point of jiu-jitsu is to submit people, but it's easy for someone to say, oh, oh, I just, it was a fluke. I got caught. I made a mistake. She arm barred me. But she went out there. Took her down, passed her guard, scored a bunch of points, dominated the match, and then went on and basically did the same thing in the finals. And like we said a minute ago, she was a huge crowd favorite. That yeah. just place erupted for her. And yeah. she was very emotional about it. it. Sounded like she's gone through some self-doubt issues, which I think is something that every competitor can relate to from the bottom to the top. So I, yeah. I was really moved by by her performance and seeing what she was able to do. Yeah. That was a match that I went back and watched yesterday with was, was her in the finals over uh, Brianna St. Marie. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen anyone, like, hold down Brianna St. Marie like that. She's just a an armbar assassin off of her back, and, yeah. and Fionn controlled that match. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, she definitely had a big pop the entire the entire time. It was really in her corner. Uh, so my number five was Amy Campo uh, taking out Gabby Garcia. <clears throat> yep, that was my number four. Um, if you watch Gabby's first match, I, I, now of course I'm brain farting on who it was against, but you know she's so hard to get a takedown against, right? Like every attack, she's just kind of like sho- shoving her off, and then Amy gets the arm drag. I'm sorry, second round, Amy uh, they're standing up for a while, right? Amy gets yeah, the arm it was drag late in the match. Yeah, gets an arm drag. They go off the mat. Gabby ends up on her back, a little bit of a scramble, ends up with Amy in an arm bar position, and that was it. Yeah, that was it. Um, Crowd went bonkers for yeah. that too. I've watched that chaos. one back a couple of times. Yeah, that was one of that was one of the craziest moments of the whole weekend. Yeah, there's not like a good angle to see it. Like where we were sitting, you probably had better angle yep. on it, but it was like so far away. But we were like, they're oh! like against the ramp. Yeah, yeah, like all the way in the corner. Um, that was a sweet arm drag, standing arm drag though. She yeah, did. she just caught Gabby pressuring forward and just yep. dragged used, her right by. Used the momentum. I yeah. found myself thinking like, oh, that's I guess the way you've got to deal with her, right? If you try to like muscle her, you're not going to go through her. Yeah, no, not yeah. a chance. So that was cool. That was my number five. You had that as number four. Yeah, my. I mean, my favorite part of all that is almost nobody has heard of Amy Campo. Like, she has like no Instagram followers. She never posts. Yeah. I barely vaguely recognized her name just because I watched the trials. So I recognized that she won mm-hmm. the trials. So I, I knew her name from that, but didn't really know anything other than that. And then, so after that whole melee with Gabby, they like bring them back to the center because like no one knows what the hell's going on. Right. Like they're putting points on the board and the crowd, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they take the points off the board yep. and the crowd boos. Like that happened three or four times. They just like couldn't figure out what the points were and, well, all this is going on. Like she had the presence of mind to be like, 
the spotlight is on. Yeah. And she just walks to the center and like does her little the, bow. The Katniss Everdeen yeah. bow. Yeah. Like she's in Hunger Games yeah. and the crowd ate it up. Yep. It was amazing. Yep. Yeah, that was awesome. I'm like, that that woman has the ability to be a superstar. Yeah. Yeah. Like she's very soft spoken, but clearly her jujitsu speaks for itself. And yep. then it seems like she has the personality and the showmanship yeah. hiding inside there somewhere to yeah. break through. I was impressed by just the, like the presence mm-hmm. of mind to be like, oh, I know we're like way out of bounds here, but we're going, right? We're still going until like, right. the they, last Yeah, second. they tell you. I mean, that's one of my talking points for later, but they tell you don't stop until we tell you to stop. So she's like, take down, side control, mount. Yep. I don't care. We're in the, yeah. the camera guys under me. The, we're <laughs> right, up against right, the ramp. Right, right. They were like, you can actually see guys like moving stuff out of the way, like by the ramp so that they don't get hurt. It was, that was crazy. Yeah, and then her finals match was incredible too. Yeah. Got uh, the back on on Rafaela Giddes, like seconds to go. Mm-hmm. Went, that's actually on my list okay. as well. Yep, yep. So my number four then was Hassan Rita over Cyborg. Super first, uh, first match on that mat. Yeah, of the day on on Saturday. Um, they're kind of going back and forth, standing a little bit of a scramble. Hassan ends up with a armbar and Cyborg. Pretty quick. It was in like the first minute or it two. Under a minute and a half, yeah. Yeah, and Cyborg tried to do like a a spin away move to get away from a takedown, and yeah. Haisam's just a super athlete. He was just all over him. Yeah. And the place went berserk. <laughs> <laughs> I it went berserk. That was one of the craziest crowd eruptions I've ever heard. Yeah. I mean, I've been at college football games with 100,000 people, and mm-hmm. it doesn't sound like that because it was just such a yeah an intimate environment. Yeah. It was nuts. Like, the place went bonkers. Like I said, it was the first one of the day. Like, yeah, we had just waited an hour and a yeah. half. Everyone's antsy. We've been sitting around waiting. And right. Then that happens. It was quick. It was yeah. quick. Um, so that was that was cool. Um, we saw some posts later about people not knowing who Hassan was. Obviously, we've seen him in some other yeah. events. I mean, it wasn't entirely surprising <clears throat> to me. I you know, watched him at that who's number one. Almost basically do the same thing to Orlando Sanchez. Just like... Super athlete move around to his back and choke him out. Yeah. Should we talk about Orlando? Man, I don't have that on my I don't even know what to say. I don't have it on my list either. I don't um, know what was going on. He just seemed like he was off. So he was in the far end of <clears throat> the mats from us, so I couldn't see a lot of detail. All I could see was him continually going for the collar tie and the referee barking at the two of them. It seemed like every minute. I didn't really know what was going on. It seemed like, I mean, we had a good view of it. And, it, you know, as far as, like, being in the, the realm of what to expect out of Orlando and also being ADCC, like, it didn't seem like he was doing anything that outrageous to me. Yeah. I think he was getting worn for maybe fingers in the eyes, but I didn't see a whole lot to get upset about. But then he was, like, complaining that he was getting hit in the nuts. and <laughs> And then... He ended up getting submitted. I don't know, even know. I don't even know what, what it was either. to or what happened. It was, yeah. it was just a weird performance. It was. It was very strange. Very Seems strange. like something was off that day for <clears throat> yeah. him. Definitely not strutting what around. Seeing. Right, yeah. like strutting around like you think he was going to start tearing people's heads off, but nope, it was, it was pretty bad. So what was that number four? That was my number four. Who do you have for number three? Number three, I have Cade Ruotolo submitting everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So talk about a superstar, like dude. He was amazing. That kid's got it all. Yeah. So I'll I'll go ahead and say that my number one moment of the weekend was his match in the seventy seven finals with with Mika. Yeah, that was I couldn't pick like I feel like he just his overall performance is deserving of yeah the top five. Yeah, there was a lot of matches that spent a lot of time standing right, and I was like personally I was like this is this, that's boring to watch. Right, like just guys going back and forth, not being up forehead to forehead the whole time, like not really being able to do anything, not forcing the action. Caden, Mike, and Mika's match was like nonstop action, nonstop. It was to me that was like what it was all about, and of course that was like I felt like it was right in front of us the entire time. Um, but I thought that was an amazing match. That, that kid is so slippery, right? Like you. He's got counters for everything. He gets out of everything, and he finds submissions yeah. from everywhere. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah, superstars, right? Yeah, I mean, he has it all. His jiu-jitsu is amazing. He's been doing it since he was five days old. Right. 
He's 19 years old. I mean, him and his brother, Ty, both. I mean, Cade gets the bigger shout out because he's the ADCC champ. I mean, both of them have the same star quality. They're yeah. 19 years old, amazing jujitsu, a style that's fun to watch because it's just fast paced, full yep. of energy, submissions. Yep. I mean, that's what we all want to see. Yep. And then he's well spoken. Put him on the mic. He's got something to say. Yep. He's not being ridiculous. Right. But he's not just shelled up and right. Oh, I'm so thankful. No, right. No, he's he's stoked about everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then his brother got huge pops during the absolute tur- uh, yeah. uh, um, tournament too. It was it was cool. Um, yeah, I thought that was a great match. To me, that was like what I wanted to see. There it was like two young guys going at it, yeah. like just trying to submit the shit out of each other the entire yeah, time. Yeah, neither of them were holding back. Yeah. It was it was awesome, and it went to the ground pretty quickly. So it's like for me, that's what I want to see. Like, show me the jujitsu. I don't. I'm not as interested in like the the wrestling aspect, right? Like, let's get to the ground and do what we got to do. So, yeah, that guy was awesome. Um, so what was that? That was my number three. Yeah. So my number three may be a little surprising. Um, <clears throat> it was a tough choice for me between this and what I have as number two. Um. But PJ Barch over JT, um, you know, and you said this one of the nights that we were there, right? Like, here's the guy that PJ models his his ADCC game after, yeah. right? And then for them to meet in the second round, um, second round, yeah, yeah, uh, and then for PJ to pull out the win was yeah. was, was pretty huge. damn awesome. That was an epic moment. Yeah, I mean i I looked at those brackets and. I'm a huge JT Torres fan. Yeah. I think I love his style. Two-time defending champ. Seems like he's, I mean, I don't know him, but he seems like he's a great person. So I I love seeing him win. I had him as my pick to win this time. Then when I saw the brackets, you know, obviously I'm pulling for PJ. I'm like, oh, I look at him like, oh, PJ wins his first match. He's going to run into JT and odds are that's the end of it. Like, I love PJ. Super good. But I'm like, it's JT Torres. Like, He hasn't lost an ADCC match in right, forever. Right. And then I kind of missed what happened too because they're out on mat one over here. And over on mat three was Wagner and Pedro Mourinho. Oh, yeah. Both just like clubbing the shit out of each other and they're <laughs> off the mat everywhere. Throw each other. Yeah. Yeah, that was you're right. You're right. So, like, every time I hear the crowd make noise, I look over there and then I look back and PJ had. Taken down JT straight to side control, four points. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. Cause I so was, I watched the back. It was a it was a really nice double leg straight to side control, but I missed it live. Yeah, I thought PJ looked great even in his first match. I think I texted you during it and was like, "That was vintage." Yep. PJ like pressure, pressure, pressure. Took the back. I even looked over at Ryan and said, "Like, up, oh, you know, you're dead once PJ gets your back." Yeah. Um, well, he told us when he was here for the seminar last year. He's like, "I've dedicated the last two years of my training to." Secure the back on sweaty shirtless guys. Yeah, because that's what's that's what ADCC is. Yeah, um, so that was really cool to see, and he was pumped. Like it was yeah. cool to see him. He had Eddie and and Boogie in his corner, and they yeah, were he's, fired up. He's usually pretty emotionless about it. Yeah, but he was fired up. It yeah. was awesome. Big hug with with Boogie. So that was really cool. He I had thought. like at least twenty of his students there too. They oh, were really? all up in that that corner <laughs> section together. Yep. Yeah. So that was really cool. That was really good. So that was my number. Three. That was my number two. That was your number two. Yeah. Okay. All right. So my number two, you already mentioned, um, <clears throat> Amy Campo and Rafael Geddes. That was a sick match. So. I mean, Rafaela is a berserker. Yeah. She's like, I don't know like what weight class she is, IBJJF, but she just seems to be like the perfect weight and build for that. Yep. That plus 60 yep. ADCC. Like she's jacked and strong and solid but not like so big that she's slower than the other women that are a little bit smaller like she's got the whole package yeah she's not like ultra bulky or anything so she i want to say so she i forget exactly how she got her points now i had this written down now i forgot for what i said so she got up a couple points and then amy ends up on her back with like three minutes to go probably in the match and is fighting to get her hooks in the entire thing. Yeah, she was she had her turtled up and just yeah, turtled up, could yeah. not get the hooks could in. Not get the hooks in. I was like, oh my god, all she needs to do is get her hooks in and she's gonna win. And right? I'm like, it's gonna be heartbreaking for her if the match just ends here yeah. and she wasn't able to get the hooks. Yeah. 
And uh, Javiela's got like her, she's turned up and she's got her <coughs> arm pinned. Like, so it's like between her own legs. So it's like blocking any entry. Yep. And then like literally with no time left, Amy gets her second hook in and wins. That was ridiculous. Yep. That was ridiculous. What she a almost got shaken off though before time yeah. ran out. Yeah. I mean, if she crazy. got shaken off and had her ended up with her guard pass, she would have lost. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. I loved, I really liked her speech too after. I don't remember what she said. I mean, it was just it's kind of the, the standard jujitsu story. She had started jujitsu to, you know, prove to herself that she could oh, yes. you know, yeah. make something of herself and do something other than sit around and be lazy and just made it to the highest level. Yeah. I thought that was really she's cool. trained with the same team from start right. to finish. So she's not and she's from like Utah. So yeah. she's with Zenith in Utah somewhere. Yeah, she's, Ogden, I think. She's not like bouncing around trying to yep. to find the best team. It's just Start to finish, same gym. She talked about, you know, elevating and bringing her training partners up to the high level with her. Just, I mean, it's all the things you like to hear from somebody. Mm. Yeah, it was very cool. That was a great moment. The crowd went berserk in that time, too. Yep. You kind of see, like, all of my moments are ones where, like, the crowd, like, was super into it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was, that's my number two. Two. And we already hit my number one. It was High Som and Cyborg. Oh, yeah? That was your number one, <laughs> yeah. huh? It was just the... The crowd reaction, the timing of it. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty That's cool. That's the most prominent moment still in my memory. Yeah. Early on, too. Yeah. Like I said, it was, we had all just waited around so long to get started at that yeah. point. Because we got there almost two hours early that day. Yep. They started over an hour and a half late. It's like, Jesus Christ, let's just yeah, let's yeah, get this going. And then he comes out and ah, the place yeah. goes crazy. Yeah. <laughs> And he, when he did his, like, victory lap down, high-fiving, everyone was just like, Rah. Yeah, yeah. It was so cool. Yeah, the place went berserk. It went AP. That was the biggest reaction, I think, of the entire weekend, regardless yep. of anything else that was <clears throat> happening on. Um, do you think jiu-jitsu can get any bigger than what it was last weekend? I think it can, but it's going to take... It's going to take more than just somebody with a passion to keep pushing it. It's, it's going to need an influx of money. And I watched Mo did a an Instagram live on like Tuesday or Wednesday, and he was saying he's he's had people from every major network reach out to him to have conversations already this week. Really? Yep. No, like, about ADCC or about him doing other work for them. ADCC. Hmm. No kidding. Yep. Oh well, I mean, that's, that's what it's going to take. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I think we're. I mean, what they did with it is ridiculous. But I think they're kind of maxed out on just what one guy and his team can do. Yeah, that's my... I mean, they had sponsors and whatnot and ticket sales, but I've also heard he's dumped a lot of his own money into it. Right. And that's just not sustainable. Right. You know, I don't mean this in a disrespectful way to any of the sponsors who were there, right? A lot of good companies and and people putting money into that event. But unless you're going to get... A big name sponsor, like oh Nike is sponsoring this, mm-hmm. or AT and T is sponsoring this, right? Yeah. That's where the money goes. Putting in millions, not right. thousands, right? Right. That's the only way that it can get big enough because nobody's going to put it on a network if they can't sell advertising for it. And if they're going to sell advertising, they're going to need those big names, right? So that's that's the way I see it. I don't. To me, unless that happens, it doesn't get any bigger. Like there's no way that the next one could be bigger. No. And I don't know that it needs to be. I mean, I'd be perfectly happy going to the same exact show again. But, yeah, you're right. If if the goal is to make it bigger and mainstream, it it's going to need that influx of yeah. primetime sponsorship. I also wonder if jiu-jitsu on its own, like as a sport, is capped based on, like, the difficulty of understanding what's going on. Yeah. Right? most you know kids are exposed to soccer and basketball and hockey and baseball and football like and they're easy kids. concepts to understand easy concepts put to the understand. ball in the net right even um when you think about mma or boxing or any kind of striking like everybody can kind of do and throw a punch they may not do it well right but they right. kind of understand what that is it's not the same thing with jiu-jitsu right like yeah i know we, we you asked this when we were out at dinner the one night like how many what percentage of the people in that arena do you think train jujitsu? And I think it, I think the entire audience, you know, maybe other than some invited celebrities was either 
people that train or their spouses and family. Family, yeah. Yeah. Right. right. I don't think there were any casuals there. They were just like saw it on the billboard and bought a ticket. Right. Right. So, you know, the, like the price of entry, I don't mean like the actual cash cost, but the price of entry to get under an understanding of what's going mm-hmm. on. I mean, there was even, I, when I watched back some of the matches, there were some things <coughs> that the, even the announcers were talking about. I was like, well, I have no idea what they're talking about right now. And I've been doing this for forever, right? Like, I have no idea what yeah. they're even saying. So I think that's also due to the, the rapid evolution of it, too. Yeah. Right. Like, I hear names and moves. I'm like, what's that? Yeah. And then I see it. I'm like, oh, that's just a, yeah. a weird way to do an arm bar. But right. they call it something else. Right. But imagine being a, a casual observer. Exactly. So I wonder about that. It'd be interesting to see. I'm what excited in two for years. the prospect, though. I'll definitely be paying attention the next two years to see what's developing, what they're doing. So, ready for my hot take? Yeah. Did you give us your number one? Yeah, my number one was Micah and. Uh, oh, King yeah, yeah. yeah. We yep. hit that earlier. That's right. Yeah, let's get that hot take. All right. So, my hot take is I don't think I need to go back and see it live again. I think one was I'm good. You think so? You're not addicted to the. No. The adrenaline and the emotion of being in the crowd? Nope. I think it would be different if it was like, I think I was more, I get more emotionally vested if like one of my friends or you or, you know what I mean? Like we're, we're competing, right? Um, that would be more emotionally investing for me. Then I'd like, I started thinking like, do I just not care about, like, I don't really care about a lot of those guys. <laughs> I know that's like horrible to say, but I just don't think I need to go back to see it live. That's my, that's my hot take. Now, if you came to me next year and were like, hey, we're getting <clears> tickets <throat> for 2024, I'd be oh, okay, I'm going. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? But it's not like, um, I don't think it's something that I felt like I would need to do every year. Um, I think I would want to see it. There's something about the way that the event was structured, which I don't think is live fan friendly in the sense that like, the waiting for things and some of those like non match related stuff. I was like, all right, I don't care about any of this. Right. Like the overall length of it is, is difficult to watch in person too. Yeah. 14 hours in a stadium seat. Right. Right. So you, that's, you that's you go to stuff. a sporting event. You're there three hours, three maybe hours. four hours. Right. And you're like, Oh, my back's killing me. We right. sat there for 14 hours. Right. It wasn't even close. 14 <laughs> hours dude. <laughs> like that is ridiculous. So that part of it to me is kind of a turnoff. Um, you know, if you're watching it at home, you're like, oh, I'm going to get up and go to the bathroom and get something to eat and take a nap, whatever, right? right. So I that might, part of it. I might pause it and then come back and catch up when there's a break in the action. Right. right. So from that perspective, I'm like, man, do I want to do that again? I don't know. So. Yeah. I, s- I can see that. I didn't actually thought about it. But, yeah, I definitely see your point. For me, you know, with having never gone before. And then having it be as big as it was, it's like, yeah, I had an amazing time. Yeah. And then just getting to see tons of people, old friends, training partners from around the country was really cool for me too. It was kind of a, a one-stop shop to mm-hmm. see a bunch of people that live in different places that I haven't gotten to see in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, how much does that wear off if you're doing it year after year? Right. It was funny to see some people reach out <clears throat> during the weekend and be like, oh my God, you're at ADCC? Like it was some fantasy thing. Right. Like, no, you can buy tickets, dude, and go. Like, it wasn't that big a deal. So from that perspective, I guess some people look at it as like, wow, that was a really cool thing for you guys to go do, which it was. Um, I just don't know that I need to go every year or every other year for this yeah, case. I don't know yeah. if I would either. I think, I mean, I love watching the divisions. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are just there. They were sold on the super fight. They were sold on Gordon Ryan. That was kind of at the bottom of the list I cared to see there. Mm-hmm. I... I just love watching the divisions. Yeah. I love watching all these up and coming guys, see how yep. the trials winners do, watch the veterans. That's that's where I'm at. It's just I love watching that stuff. So even if I was at home, I would have been glued to the couch for all of yeah. those hours. I um I could have left after the finals of the divisions. Like I was like, all right, I don't really care about the with how late it was going and how early our flights were. You know, Kate and I had a six AM flight out of Vegas. So we were up at quarter after three, and we left the venue at 11 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> so it was running through my head. Like, <clears throat> once the absolute final was set, I'm like, I don't really care about that match. I don't really care about the Gordon and Andre super fight either. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't care about that. I mean, I considered saying let's go, but I'm like, 
it's not going to be that much longer. It's just stick it out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, so that was for me. I agree with you. Like I would have loved to watch. I could have just watched the the divisions. And you're happy. not getting a casual person to sit there for that. No. Even the people that were in front of us on day one, they were family of John Hansen, I think. Yep. yep. He got the injury default over Vinny in the first round yeah. and then lost to Nicky Rod in the second round. But yep. after that, they were gone. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, yeah, it's tough. It was, it was a lot. It was just a lot. That's what people have asked me, like, how was it? And I was like, it was awesome, but it was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot to, it was certainly to like take in. So much overstimulation. Yeah. I mean, like every now and then Kate would just like plop her hand on my leg and I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> she's right. like, what's wrong? I'm like, I'm just, I'm so overstimulated. Yeah. <laughs> like being touched is yeah. startling. We sat there, especially that first day when we were there for like a couple hours before anything even happened. I was like, dude, this music is going to make, it was awesome music. Like we said, right. DJ was awesome. But I was like, I don't need to hear pumping music for three hours. Right. Like strobe lights going off the whole time. So it's just a lot. You couldn't really get up because it was open seating in the section. Yeah. And it was all the lower level was sold out. So. Right. And we we were in different spots, but we, we both had really good seats that we didn't want right. to give up. So Kate and I were taking turns. Yeah. Go to the bathroom, go grab food. Right. Second day, we sat with a group. So we were able to divide and conquer a little yep. bit more, hold the seats. Yeah, that made it tough. Um, they said, Mo said, next time, definitely. Assigned seats. Oh, did he? Yep. Yeah, that was one of the big things I would change, too. That was a pain in the ass. Because people, doors open two hours early. People got there two and a half hours early to get in, reserve their first row. Right. And then other people are showing up four hours in and getting kind of pissed off that all right. the good seats are gone. Right. Well, right. I paid a lot of money for these tickets. Right. Like, right. Well, this section goes all the way up there. Right. Yeah, that was, that was tough. Because then you could at least, like... Hey, we're going to go for, for a beer. Like, we'll go over here and hang out for a little while. Or if we're not going to start for two hours, I'm going to go right. Go walk around. Right. Yeah, I don't have to actually get there until I need to. So that part of it, yeah, I would definitely. If they changed that, I would probably be more apt to be like, oh, yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Like, I want to see some of those differences. <clears throat> yeah, so I guess I kind of fall in the same boat as you. If someone says, hey, let's, I'm buying tickets, you want to go? Yeah, I'll probably be convinced. Yeah, depending on where it is, right? Yeah. I'm not going to China for, <laughs> for for the next one. No, Springfield would be amazing. Yeah, be, if you can do one <laughs> in the western Massachusetts area, that'd be great. I'll take one in Boston. That'd be even fine, too. Yeah. So um, so I don't have necessarily a hot take, but I have a couple of, of talking points. One yeah. of them that irks me all the time with ADCC is the wrestling out of bounds. And I know it's in the rules. I know the competitors know what they're getting into. They're told what to expect. It's made very clear to them in the rules. But it seems ridiculous to me that at the highest level of our sport, we just have people wrestling on concrete. Yeah. Through the chairs on, I mean, I know camera guys in other sports get in the way, but yeah. every sport has clear boundaries yeah. that are strictly enforced, yeah. except jujitsu. And you can't say it's because of the wrestling, because wrestling has boundaries. Right. There's a circle on the mat. <laughs> there's very defined criteria on, on like what counts as a takedown, inbounds, out of bounds, toes in, toes out, whatever. Like the same thing can be done. Maybe they need to make the mats a little bit bigger, so it's not as much of a problem. But that drives me crazy. Yeah. I know the competitors don't really care, and I've heard that in the past when they used to stop them more and reset them, people would complain because. They were on their way to doing something and they got stopped, but I don't know. I feel like something has to be done about it. Yeah, to your point, the Wagner match. <clears throat> was, were you, they weren't even close. It was ridiculous. They were way over there. It was <laughs> ridiculous. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and then other times. And that's just concrete. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, someone's going to get killed. Um, it was interesting, though, because sometimes that same ref was on that third mat. He would be restarting them for other things. Like, they would just get into the black, and he'd be like, we're starting them. It's like, oh, yeah. man. Like, come on, guys. We've got to get more consistent here. Like, Kendall happening. Rusin got laid out on the concrete. Yeah. And luckily, it was just a knee injury. Everyone on our side is like, oh, my God. She just yeah. cracked her head open on the yeah. concrete that's what floor. Was, that's what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. It's too bad. So that bugs me. I don't know that they'll change it, but some people seem to love it. It just seems crazy to me. Yeah. Do you like the ADCC, ADCC scoring? I... I do like the rule set, but there's a little bit too much human 
interaction that has to happen with scoring it. But over, I like the essence of the rule set. I like that you have to hold the person down for your points, flatten them out, establish control positions, all that stuff, because it's very translatable to like any fight scenario. And I've been talking about this in class this week because we've been working on securing the back position. I'm saying like if, whether we're in IBJJF, ADCC, UFC, street fight, if you can take someone down and take their back, you're winning no matter what it is. So I, I like that part of it. But I don't really like how much like conferencing happens at the the scoring table yeah. to figure it out. Yeah. And you'll see like points will go on the board, then they're off the board. Mm-hmm. And I get there's like three of them there, so they're kinda conferring with each other to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I like the way it works though. I'm sure it's frustrating as a competitor. You hit this amazing takedown and the person just forces their way to turtle and right. it doesn't count. It doesn't count. Right. But get good at taking the back and you'll be rewarded. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. Um, <clears throat> I like the fact that the begin it's not points in the beginning. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you're more of a, an open sub only guy, you have your opportunity to make something happen without yeah. being penalized. Yeah. Yeah. And you saw a lot of that guys would go out there and they'd sit down and, try to do something, they'd maybe get taken down or get their guard passed and be able to recover and get back to a, a neutral position by the time there were points. Right. Yeah, it was interesting to hear, like, you know, the ref and the crowd are both saying, like, <laughs> points! points. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as the clock yeah. turned. So halfway through, for those who aren't familiar. Yeah. Um, what, other t- what other points do you have? My other point was how impressed I was with the crowd in the audience overall, you know, we've talked about in here, jujitsu is very team and tribal based. Like everyone's got their team, their association, their tribe. Yep. But to me, it really felt like we were on team jujitsu there. Yeah. That's a great point. Like other than some very, very minor moments, it was generally like everyone was cheering for somebody at the same time. Or yep. even when someone was being booed, everybody was yeah. booing them. And it wasn't even usually the competitor. It was more a situation. Yeah. Like there was a bad call or the crowd thought it was a bad call right. or, or whatnot, but it felt very cohesive to me. What I did, loved it. What did you think about some of like the, not heckling, <clears throat> but like, you know, it's very quiet during the finals match. I wish they kept the music playing during the finals. I did There's too. absolutely no reason not to. Yeah. Because so, it just gives kind of the drunk yeah, assholes a chance to... Right. gives them a stage to right. say something stupid. So it's quiet, right? There's two guys in the middle of the whole entire arena. And I think it started, like, during Craig's... Craig Jones's yeah. match. And guys are, like, yelling out stupid things to get a reaction. You know, they're yelling it out to get a reaction. I was like, man, that's embarrassing. Yep. Like, come on. And at one point, they put the music on just, like, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um. That was yeah, lame. They should have just kept the music on. Yeah. That was lame, in my opinion. Like, those guys, it's just, that was typical, typical stupid fandom mm-hmm. stuff, right, which bothered me. Um, yeah. So, yeah. other than that part, yeah, I was impressed with the crowd. Yeah. I yeah. just found it really cool. Like, you know, obviously, when, when their guy would win, you'd get, like, a bigger reaction from that little group in your section. But yeah. it was a lot of just, like, cheering for everybody, cheering for great moments. Yep. Yeah, definitely not a little different than a football game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how about the when you when you break <clears> it all <throat> down, the two winners of ADCC? I don't mean the people, but like New Wave Jiu Jitsu, Atos Jiu Jitsu. Like, are you kidding me? Like, how many people in the finals and yeah. medalists out of all that? Right? Like, unbelievable. Yeah, top of the heap for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even even Fion, right? Is there? That's an Atos. Affiliate, I think. JT. She did her camp with JT, yeah. yeah. So JT came from Atos. So I don't know if she's staying there, if she's going yeah. back home to the UK. Yeah. But yeah, she did her whole camp with JT. I mean, ridiculous, right? Both were Tolos. Yep. Um, and even had guys like, uh, you know, Miragali, who, you know, is fairly new to <laughs> Nogi Jiu Jitsu, you know, with, with Don Her and his team. Like, man, these guys are all over the place. Yeah. I mean, Probably should have been on my top five list, or at least an honorable mention. But Giancarlo Badani had a breakout performance. Yeah, yeah, 
Who I've never heard of him before. Yeah, I've known of him, but I I wouldn't have pegged him to to have won the event, let alone the way that he did. Yeah, dominantly. Yeah, super impressive. And then he was the only <clears throat> champ to come back for the absolutes too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's another guy, right? I mean, these guys they're just those guys dominated the those two schools in particular. Really were a force in the uh, in the winners circle. Yeah, I mean, Atos is perennial yeah. at ADCC. Yeah. And then all those guys in New Wave now, you know, they put in big-time camps and, and focused work to prepare for ADCC trials and the rule set and obviously the, the main events. Yeah. It's funny to watch... Um, <laughs> it's funny to watch John, like, coaching. Like, we're Ryan and I are watching him, and he's very, very still almost the entire time, right? Just... <laughs> it's like a, a bad scientist over there conducting. Yeah, I thought it was a blast, though. I had so many cool moments. So many breakout performances. It was a huge changing of the guard. Yeah. Just, like, how many... There were so many competitors in the finals that could have been the new youngest ever ADCC champ. Yeah. End up being Cade at 19, but... Yeah. There were multiple of these young guys that would have been the youngest ever. Yeah. Yeah, it was very cool. What'd you think of the what you think of the super fight? Uh I don't know. It didn't excite me, but it didn't surprise me. I can't stand when athletes, whether it's jujitsu guys or football players, like no excuses, but I have a knee injury. I know. Or I'm like keep oh, it to yourself. Don't do that to yourself, Andre, right? Like yep. just don't. It was gonna make no difference. Yeah. Come on. Yep. Don't do that. Like don't say I'm not going to make excuses and then say Yeah, either make an excuse right, or don't make an excuse. Right. Just keep your mouth closed. So I, that, like, I was cringing at that point. I was like, oh, God, don't do that. Yeah, that didn't do a lot for me. It was, I mean, it's impressive to see someone do that to Andre, but I wasn't very surprised that it did happen. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I didn't really care. Yeah, for me, much. it's like I said, it's all about the divisions, the super fights, whatever. I just love watching the unknown guys, especially the first round, because it's usually, you know, one versus 16. Like mm-hmm. 16 wins sometimes, and yeah. it's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Like, I was telling you guys, Lewis has been telling me for a while about all these European guys that are coming out of the trials and stuff that I'd never heard of, and a bunch of them were out there winning, putting putting their name out there. Yeah. Yeah. So that was awesome. I love, I love watching moments of and getting to witness, like, moments of excellence. Like, regardless of what it is, just you see someone that has put the work in and they just have that breakout moment and yeah. and finally achieve what they've been working for. Yeah. And I felt like there was a lot of that. Like you, A lot of the perennial winners didn't make it through, so it was almost a, a breakthrough for most of the champions. Well, there were no repeats in their same division, right? So no, because, well, Gordon and Kynan right, swapped moved divisions. Around. Right, yeah. right, right, right. But they were, so they were <clears throat> repeat Medalists, but not in their previous divisions. Yep. Um, yep. Baby Shark brought his dad out there crying. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That was awesome. That was awesome. I mean, uh, half of them were out there crying. It's yeah. just, yeah. It's not just a, a grappling match to them. Yep. Yeah, was, that's pretty cool. I always say to my buddies, like, like, oh, I hate Tiger Woods or I hate LeBron. And it's like, why? Like, I want to see the best. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't care what they're doing. Like, I want to see, I would love to see LeBron go for 150 points in a game because that would be something I can say, like, oh, I saw that, right? Like, I don't care. Yep. Um, I liked Kenny Florian's post-fight questions, too. A lot of it was all based around, you know, they were short interviews, but a lot of it was based around, you know, what does this mean to you? What did you do different this camp? Yeah. Yeah. I felt like those were good questions to get kind of that, that emotion out of the competitors to, like we were saying, like, you know, Fionn was saying she didn't believe in herself after some losses and she didn't think she could get to this point and had that breakthrough and it means the world to her. Yeah. Yeah. It was well done. It's hard to say anything negative about like the action, right? Like, yeah, it was just the timing of it. Right. Every, I mean, for us, it's kind of expected. We know how jujitsu goes. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> like at one point, Kate asked me, is when they went down to just, Two mats. She's uh-huh. like, why are they only doing two mats? I'm like, because their goal is to drag this out as long as possible. <laughs> right, right. It was making me crazy, too, that they were only using two when they could be using three, but I, I understand why. So, 
Yeah, that was good. All right. I have so many matches I I need to go back and watch to, like, really analyze. Yeah. I mean, the seats were good. Like, you could see everything, but it's hard to see, like, little minutiae, right? Some of the the submissions, like, I don't even know exactly what happened. It's hard to remember. I want to. Yeah. There's a bunch of matches I want to actually study and take away something from it. Yep. Yep. When I have time to go back and watch. Hours of jiu-jitsu. 30 hours of jiu-jitsu. Right, right. Probably even more than that. I mean, it was 20-something hours of jiu-jitsu watching multiple mats at a time. Oh, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, there were, what, 100 matches, I think? Maybe even more. I'd believe it. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right. Any other hot takes? Any other points we want to make? No. All right. Nope, that covers it. All right. That's our breakdown from 2022 ADCC. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks for all. See you guys. See ya.